Hey, it's me, the mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what I would, but you already did it. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Gennetti, and MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff, and we're going to rock it. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. 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 And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut <laughs> music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're going to get it right here. Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. Duh. I'm having a wonderful time with Monty Nefero. And I'm gonna play with the cross face chicken and he's gonna go down right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Not gonna call off the Russian nightmare! And you're watching the number one show on Long Island with Monty and the Pharaoh. Ah. He was not fired. He was not suspended. Um it's kind of baffling, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know where he's coming from. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, seen only here out of Indie Music TV in Long Island, New York. Welcoming our special guest, SWE Fury's own, Mr. James Beard. James, how are you doing, buddy? Doing great, guys. How are you? Uh, I get home from work last night, kind of getting the notes together and the script together, and mm. Bingo, bango, we find out that Hannibal, who's one of your main guys, <laughs> right, he's a big yeah. part of your federation, and he went on to say that he is no longer going to be part of SWE Fury, and then basically he's been accused of trying to start a federation in Texas on his own. Can you weigh in on that? I, I can tell you that uh, I, from what I know, he was never accused by anybody in our office. I talked to Tom Lance today, and we and uh, he assured me that that wasn't the case. And and in fact, he sent me uh, the last correspondence they had with each other, uh, text-wise, and uh, it totally is counter to what you, people are saying right now. And I don't I don't really understand what uh, uh, where, where Hannibal was coming from with that. To be honest with you, a couple of things. Honestly, uh, I, I, he was not fired. He was not suspended. Um, I, I, it's kind of baffling, to be honest with you. I, I, don't, I don't know where he's coming from. Do you feel like he's doing damage control? Because it, it, why would he lie? I'm just curious as to what is his motivation? Uh, well, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, mm. uh, you know, I've, I've had a good relationship with him, and we've done a, we've been doing a podcast together. Okay. Uh, about inside of the UE, and and uh, uh, and I consider him a friend, and and they all came as a shock to me, to be honest. With you. I, just, I I didn't know it. I didn't know what was happening, and uh, you know, we had, an, had a little bit of an incident at a high show the other night where a, a kid that he was working with got hurt pretty bad and had to go to the hospital and have stitches and that kind of thing, and, and I, know that, uh, I know that Tom and, 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 and Teddy Long, and, and in fact, I talked to him myself a little bit about it. it you know, it wasn't a, big, wasn't a big deal. I mean, it was a big deal to the kid that got hurt, but not, not, uh, not something that we were going to make a big deal out of. And uh, the next thing I know, the next day, I'm hearing this all this stuff about uh, he's, he's leaving, you know. And I and I hadn't I hadn't talked to him. We had we usually did our podcast on Tuesday nights. I didn't hear from him until last night. And it was just a text, and, and uh, 
he basically told me the same thing that if that somebody that uh, it was an office decision and the management decision and you know, being part of the management that was news to me but uh, and and also uh, uh, Tom sent me the, the correspondence they had with each other and it was very friendly and back and forth and, and uh, it made no sense to me what what's been said uh, over uh, over the last day or so I, I don't understand it to be honest with you I, just, I don't get it what is this going to mean to SWE? But, but I can say this. But well, I mean, he's a big help to us. There's no question about that. He he gave us a lot of uh, exposure, uh, and uh, he did he did have some money invested in 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 Blood Hunter and Blood Hunter's opponents, and and uh, uh, also with Selena. And and I mean, that's just a fact. We we're not denying that at all. Uh, okay. That that was something he wanted to do. You know, something okay. to help himself as, as well. We thought maybe that that he he was just uh, you know tired. He spent spent a lot of money being in Texas and not being able to go home to Canada. And we thought maybe uh, maybe he just needed a break. And and uh, you know I I've got it on. I've got it. You know, text back and forth to him and Tom talking about that. And Tom offered me. He said, you know, anytime you want to come back, you you're welcome. So what's the, the what's whole the, the whole thing is just kind of odd. Was the physicality? Actually, did that have legs? Because I had heard something about Just Incredible months back had actually walked out on him during a match. Was there true concern yeah. about his physicality in the ring? There was some with some guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think okay. some, some guys thought he was a little, a little dangerous. I, 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 he, he was he was very very uh, snug. I'll put it that way. Snug and uh, and. Yeah, yeah. And, gotcha. Uh, yeah, and, 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 you know, there were some guys that, that don't like that. You know, they, they don't like working with that. And mm -hmm. uh, But it, it was one of the things that got him over. You know, there's no question about that. Uh, and he was a big help to us in that way. But uh, And, and we're, we're really kind of presenting a different kind of style anyway. It's just a little more little more of a believability uh, factor involved in it and, and, and definitely a, a little tighter work. Mm -hmm. But uh, and he took it a little bit beyond that sometimes. But uh, you know, uh, everybody's different. Some guys. He had a match with Rodney Mac uh, a couple of uh, I guess about three weeks ago at a rodeo arena, and it was as, as uh, it was as brutal as any match I've ever been involved in. And and uh, I was refereeing it. We chased them all over the arena, and they, they were killing each other. And you know, after it was over, with Rodney just smiled and went on. Mm -hmm. You know, and then some other guys that they would they would get in a match like that, and they'd probably complain about it. But this way it is. I got I got to ask you with the timing of this news with Hannibal, and I I'm saying this respectfully. Hopefully you'll understand it when I when I say this because I do like the product and I like the direction that it was heading in. But when this happens today. Uh, because of Hannibal's presence within the broadcast, you know, YouTube world, I almost feel like whether you, whether it was intended or not on the company's part, I almost feel like you accidentally might have shot yourself in the foot. What does the what does the company do now to to get out there for the fans to help boost it? Because I do believe his presence was helping it on YouTube for sure. Well, there's no no question about that. You know, we we certainly understand that and, and appreciate that. Mm -hmm. He was told that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know that I don't know that the company shot shot ourselves in the foot because we didn't do anything. Okay. There, there was absolutely absolutely nothing done by anybody in the company to force him out or try to get him to leave. In fact, just the opposite. You know, okay. and Fair uh, enough. I, I, why why he decided to take that approach? I guess I, I don't I don't understand because mm. we had a good relationship. You know, that, 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 that and as far he and I personally, we we had a very good relationship and. I don't know. It's just really strange. Have you guys had conversations amongst yourself, like with Teddy and, you know, of course, the, 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 the main brain trust of the company? Like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and we're all a little, little um, I guess, puzzled by it. Uh, Fair enough. I, I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know if maybe he just, it, it, I mean, he did say that he had spent a lot of money, and that's true. And uh, and uh, he's been down in Texas for a while, and, and, um, and, and he couldn't go back home or, couldn't go back and forth. I think that's what the problem was. But, uh, you, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the motivation is. You know, they, he, all he had to do was just say, you know, I need to, I need to take a break, and that would be okay. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be a problem. And still mm -hmm. isn't, you know, for, as far as we're concerned. Well, uh, I, I, don't, um, I don't know what else we could have done. We didn't, uh, we didn't do anything to force him out. I'll put it that way. All right, so we're going to pull back a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about some of your WCCW days. Uh, were you around Steve Austin when he was down in that federation at all? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was there from the time, actually before he even started. Uh, uh, Chris, he was in Chris Adams' school down there. Oh. And uh, I probably worked I worked some of his first matches. You know, so we, uh, we've we known each other a long time. He, he would, uh, you know, we worked together. He'd come over to my house and watch tape and all that stuff. With that. I knew him very well. So let, let me ask you this. Uh, when he was down there, so we were talking about the documentaries and maybe the light that Savage which you clearly said Savage was portrayed properly there. Do you think they went light on Austin considering the problems that he's had with some of his ex-wives and some of the rumors that have happened? I honestly have not seen that that uh, uh, documentary yet. Uh, I, I guess I need to watch it. I, you know, I, I knew Steve well. I knew Jeannie. Uh, I know that uh, they had some issues and, and, and Tony had some issues. I mean, it was, she and Tony had some issues, you know, that Chris Adams' wife, and it was just a, um, it, it was a kind of an odd situation down there for them, you know, real, really uh, uh, uncomfortable situation after Steve and, and Jeannie started seeing each other outside the wrestling business, and, and uh, you know, their relationship got kind of weird too after a while. And, and I know she wrote she wrote about that in her book. If you wrote if you read that, she she was pretty candid about all that. Um, and uh, it, uh, Steve's other relationships, I really don't know that much about because I wasn't around here that much after left Dallas. Knowing knowing Austin from the very beginning, basically, did you did you foresee the magic of the career this guy wound up having? I mean, my lord. I I, I knew he was going to be successful. I, I mean, you never know that a guy's going to be that um, that over the top successful. Hmm. Uh, he, he was determined. You know, he was a guy that watched all the matches and, and paid attention. He ask questions uh, he was he's a very studious type uh, guy in, in in the background and uh, and and he was always willing to train and learn different things so he, he, I you know he just had all those aspects all those all those traits that you knew were, were going to lead him somewhere successful and he was determined you know he that and when he got to WCW he was very uh, uh, he he got to a point where he was very very uh, I guess disillusioned with how they were using him and 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 I, I talked to him a little bit back in those days in fact I was with him at, at one point and when it was spent some some days with him at his house and, and went on tour with him and, and uh, yeah I, I could tell at that point he was getting a little frustrated and you know he was just one of those guys that was determined and and, and I knew that, that when he got that opportunity it was going to happen for him did you how did you feel about the Hollywood Blondes? Because my partner and I were talking about that earlier this week. Do you, do you feel at that time that Austin was um, frustrated with that gimmick? Do you think that that team got enough love at the time? Because they, they certainly didn't attain uh, Road Warrior status. Well, let, let me tell you a story. I, I, went, I told you I went up there and stayed with him a little bit. And in fact, I went on the road. I, that was when Bill, Bill Watts was uh, booking the WCW. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually going up there to talk to Bill, uh, maybe about going to work for him. I didn't know whether I wanted to even do that or not. But, but I went up there, spent about a week with Steve and, and went on the, on the run with him and uh, uh, Scott Anthony, actually, uh, Raven. That's, that's gotcha. who he became. But anyway, we, we were at one of the, one of the shows and, and uh, we were sitting in the dressing room and Bill came down and, and called Steve over to the side. I mean, he was right there in the dressing room, but, but in front of everybody. And I could tell Steve wasn't happy about something. I didn't know what it was at the time. But uh, that was the night Bill told him that they were going to put him with Pillman and make the tag team. And Steve was mad. And, and, well, yeah, very. He, he, because he had been told that he was going to be uh, pushed kind of it as the guy that comes up after flair you know the guy that, that that takes that spot you know and right and, and uh he was he was he was aiming for that and and man let me tell you after that show we drove home he was he didn't say a word he was uh, he was really hot we got home to, got to his house in atlanta and uh he had to get out and he got on he got on this motorcycle and he rode up around around and around it is he had about a 10 acre property there and, <laughs> and uh, uh you know genie said he's mad about something i said yeah he sure is and, and, and he was just steam, steaming over that and I, I think eventually he came to appreciate the tag team and when it worked out well for him but right. but uh, man he was not not a happy camper Right. Well, you've given us a glimpse into Austin's beginnings. How about a glimpse into your beginning? How do you get started in pro wrestling? I was playing music in the Dallas area and uh, got to know some of the guys uh, that come into different places where I'd be. And, and 
I, you know, I've been a wrestling fan all my life, really, and, and uh, kind of had a clue, I guess. And, and you know, when they, they get to talking to you and they find out that, and, they, and then they're just kind of like talking to the boys, you know. And, and, right. and uh, eventually uh, they kind of goaded me. And actually, Bruiser Brody was one of the main guys and, and kind of goaded me into trying it, you know. And I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll do it just for fun, see how I like it. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm working some shows around Dallas. And the next thing I know, I'm working at Sportatorium. And then I got a gig in Japan. And, and I. Music had music had to take a back seat after that. Tell me about your relationship with the Von Erichs, especially uh, maybe Kerry, because I've always been a huge Kerry fan. Yes, and you have. Uh, yes, you man, have. oh man, go ahead. I was I was probably closer to Kerry than any of them. I, I really didn't get to spend a lot of time with around David. I knew him, but uh, he was he died before I actually got into the into the business. And, yeah. and, uh, um, but and and I and I got to know Kevin very well and still still communicate with him once in a while and and uh, but but Kerry was I was probably closer to Kerry than any of them and, and uh, just just a uh, sweetheart of a guy really you know you, you couldn't ask for a nicer guy I mean he all every, everybody has their issues you know and they they all the stories are out there and you hear all of them some of them are exaggerated some of them are true but uh, uh, Kerry was a super guy just a sweetheart. The level of heartbreak had to be unbearable when he, he left. No, yeah. I, I was in Japan. I, I was on a tour in Japan at the time, and and uh, they called and and told me about it. And of course, I had some of the guys from the Sportatorium with me there, and and I had to break the news. It was it was a pretty tough week. We still had another several days, and we didn't, we didn't get back in time for the funeral. And it was it was tough. It really was. Uh, he was he was a special guy. Knowing him the way you did, did you ever? fear that something like this a sudden end would come to him uh well i hate to i hate to say it but yeah i i, I this part of me was not 100 percent shocked because mm. kerry would even talk about that sometimes you know about going to be with his brothers and and he was pretty despondent about some personal things at the time and, and I, i'd i'd talked to him and work with him just before i left to go to japan that time and and uh you know, I, I tried to encourage him. You know, things are going to be okay. He had, had some legal issues that he was dealing with, and you know, I I just knew that if if he would if he'd just deal with them and get it over with, he'd be all right. But you know, I, I guess it just got to be too much for him. My partner absolutely adores Kerry, so I ask you, and I know that the the real answer is is all the Von Erichs were truly great, especially back in the day. But is Kerry the greatest Von Erich of all? I personally lean towards David, but that's me. Uh, it depends on how you look at it. If, if you're talking about charisma, uh, I've never been around a wrestler that had the charisma that Kerry Von Erich has, and I'm mm. talking about anybody, Hogan, mm. anybody, mm. just just natural. Um, mm -hmm. And he's so he was so athletic for a guy that weighed 265, 70 pounds. He could fly around before he hurt his leg, especially. And uh, he was just an amazing athlete. Uh, of course, Kevin was a great athlete as well. But but when it comes down to comes down to just who I, who, who I think was probably destined to have the greatest, uh, maybe the greatest influence in wrestling, it, it would have to be David. He, mm. he was the, he was the guy with the, with the with the head on his shoulders. The guy who had the ability to uh, work as, as as a heel and get heat and, yep. and enjoy doing that. And yep. And I think he would. He was. You know, you hear all the stories and rumors about they were grooming him to take the NWA title, and I've heard that from people who uh, were inside and knew that that was exactly the case. So I have to believe that was probably true. Gary Hart is one of the greatest managers ever. If there was a penthouse, I do believe he deserves to be there because a heel manager's job is just to force the viewer into complete despisal. I despise this man. I'm going to reach into the set and choke him. Any thoughts on what I consider one of the most underrated managers ever, Gary Hart? Because I feel like he's getting lost in the sands of time. Well, first of all, Gary uh, is, it was a very dear friend and, and, and a guy I consider one of my mentors, really. Uh, I learned so, so much from Gary. Uh, you're right. He, he was a special kind of uh, uh, a manager that, that's really unusual. Uh, he, he was understated. You know, he, he, a lot of times he would... He'd make, you, he'd make you think that uh, he was giving the praise to his opponent and he just almost real sinister in that way, you know, and, and uh, a lot of people were scared to death of him. And, and he was, you know, he was, a, he was a street tough guy, no question about that, but he was a sweetheart of a guy too. I, I loved Gary, a great friend and, and 
you're right. He, he should be remembered by by more people as one of the greatest managers of all time. Now, is this by design that you're bringing in these family members? Because I love I love that whole setup. You guys are doing such a great job with that. Uh, you it's it's you know you're bringing some old like I said old school guys like Gangrel in there, and then you've got these young guys, and, uh, and then they bring Teal Piper. Yeah, yeah, well yeah. done. And then they've yeah. got that. Yeah, and we intend to do more with Teal. Uh, the the intent is to have her featured in in the. Uh, I can, we keep hearing how well she can talk. We haven't really given her the opportunity to do that yet. Right. Uh, you know, the, that's a hard thing about what what we're doing right now because uh, we we fought through this COVID thing and and then we had to take like three episodes every night. And sometimes there was four. Uh, we're trying to fit you know a, a whole lot into a little bit of time, and and it's really hard to kind of get all that together and do that. Mm-hmm. But the plan is to have have Till more involved in and in, and in doing some some of the things that we hear she is capable of doing, and, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to working with her on that. Uh, and, and as far as the other uh, siblings and family members and all uh, that, that's that's been we, we want to we want to honor the legacy of wrestling, and and that's partly been done on purpose to to kind of make those connections. Uh, we want to do it in a way that 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 not. Uh, condescending to any of them but uh, uh, you know we want to use them in a way that they're, they're, they're the most useful not just throw them in there and say hey you know this is uh, Terry Von Eric's daughter or this is Terry, Terry Gordy's daughter or you know whatever we, we're trying to we're trying to give them a role that that, that they're more comfortable in and they're, they're useful in and they can help us in, in some way but uh, we don't want to make something of it that it's not uh, uh, the main the main thing we're, the main thing we're trying to do in SWE is is we're trying to bring back some, uh, I guess, believability, uh, something that the fans can trust in and know that, you know, if you watch this program, that, that you're not going to have your intelligence insulted. Uh, we're going to have fun with it. We're going to do some things that are exciting and, and, and have all different styles and all, but, but the, end, the end result is we want people to believe because we're going to believe in ourselves. And I think that's one thing that's missing in wrestling right now is that everybody thinks it's a joke, and it's not. You know, if you, if you take yourself seriously, the fans will take you seriously. I don't care how much they know. I prefer having heels on the top, baby faces chasing. I think that's a kind of a traditional way of looking at it. But, sure. but that's, that's, sure. what I, that's what I think draws the most interest because that keeps the, that keeps the baby faces searching and, and, and fighting for the top and, and fans interested in, in how they get there. You have to have some way to get these guys over and, and you have to, have to expose them to talent that's already over in order to do that and that's a, that's where you use those those veterans that, that you bring in and 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 hopefully use them in the right way so that, that it's building something underneath there uh and, and then, then then you got the issue of trying to find the right talent that you're building you know the right guys uh somebody who has those uh those traits that you know can get over and 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 become uh more than just another guy and and we've got a couple of guys that we're we're you know probably three or four guys right now that we're kind of concentrating on that that I think if we can we can get them the right kind of exposure and the right kind of situation uh, I think they they have the chance to become those guys that we're looking for. Uh, the enforcer Andrew Anderson, uh, the bruiser type, plus his you know his background you know being in the you know movies like The Wrestler and and Gotham, he's a good catch for you guys. Any thoughts on what it's been like working with the reinforcer? Well, I've known Andrew a long time. When I was I was running the NWA for several years, and and uh, I got to know Andrew back in those days. And and uh, he was running a promotion up there in in, in New York or New Jersey uh, called uh, Big Apple, uh, NWA Big Apple. And mm-hmm. We got to be very very good friends. And and uh, so yeah, I, I, he was one of the guys that that you know we brought in from the very beginning. And. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, he's just he's a he's a good friend and he works hard and and uh, you know he 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 knows a lot of people you know that you know Andrew and uh, sure sure uh, you know so I'm, I'm I'm very you know I'm very happy that he's he's starting to find some uh, I think he's I think he's starting to really have fun with it now uh, it, at first I think he was kind of trying to find himself a little bit but I think mm. uh, I think we're kind of we're doing some things with him right now that I think he's he's enjoying and and uh, I'm looking forward to what we what we do in the future. What would you say is your biggest role in SWE Fury? My biggest role? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 my my title is, is uh, talent relations, and I think that's probably that's probably a big part of it. You know, because I, I've I've been very fortunate to have uh, good relationships in this business over the years, and 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 uh, I've, a lot of younger guys that I've gotten to know, and 
and I'm able to, to relate to. And, and even though I'm I'm an old guy, you know, and, and, and I kind of set my ways as far as wrestling goes. But but I think I think I think being able to relate to those guys is a big part of it. I, 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 the creative side of it, uh, being able to contribute to that, that's something I've been doing since. Uh, 30 years ago, a lot of times in the background without people knowing about it, but I did it. Give me your Texas Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. Now, this becomes difficult because you're talking about the Funks, you're talking about the Von Erichs, you're talking about the Freepa, you're talking about so many, but you got to give me four faces. Don't forget that, about the Blanchards. That, yeah, there's others too. Yeah. There's more families. There's a, a million. You got to give me four faces that you would put on the Texas pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. Who are they? Well, I'll only give you four. Uh, man, that, that, that is tough. I'm that's sorry tough. to do that, but uh, I had to because uh, of your Texas legacy, that's sir. Okay. That, that, that's okay. That's I, okay. I'll, I'll give it a whirl and see what happens. I'm, I'm like, you not? may have asked me this tomorrow, and I have four different ones. Who knows? That, but, <laughs> that would be fair <laughs> enough, too. That would be fair <laughs> enough, too. Yeah, I, I would, I'd have to put Fritz on it. Okay, uh, Fritz von just, Eric. Just knowing his legacy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Obviously. Dory, Dory, Dory Jr., Dory yeah. Funk Jr. Uh, and oh, Terry. And Terry. That makes sense. You got one more. Yeah, and uh, oh, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm leading towards oh, Von Eric, but I'm, I'm, not... I'm going to change. I, okay, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one that really didn't do that much in Texas, okay. but uh, he, he represented Texas in a way that was beyond uh, Stan Hansen. Wow. Oh, there you go, I brother. I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, that. James, we want to thank you, and uh, awesome. what an incredible interview, and we look forward to seeing SWE thank Fury in the future, and we're wishing you and the team great luck. Thank you so much, guys. Anytime.